James Solomon McDonald, Solomon Vincent McDonald Burke was an American singer who shaped the sound of rhythm and blues as one of the founding fathers of soul music in the 1960s. He has been called a key transitional figure bridging R&B and soul and was known for his prodigious output. He was referred to honorifically as King Solomon, the King of Rock and Soul and Bishop of Soul. His smooth, powerful articulation and mingling of sacred and profane themes helped define soul music in the early 1960s. Burke has been described as the genre's most unfairly overlooked singer of its golden age. During the 55 years that he performed professionally and released 38 studio albums and had 35 singles that charted in the U.S., including 26 singles that made the Billboard R&B charts, he only managed to win a Grammy Award for Best Contemporary Blues Album and his net worth is estimated at $1 million. He had minimal chart success in comparison to other soul music greats of his time such as James Brown whom he had won the King of Soul crown at a concert in Chicago, Wilson Pickett, and Otis Redding. He signed to at least 17 record labels. Once he was abruptly dropped from Apollo following a violent argument with manager Kay Williams over performance royalties, Burke claimed Williams had him blackballed from the industry following this move. Following his initial Apollo departure, Burke struggled to record or get club dates and an argument with his mother left him homeless. Burke was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a performer. He was credited with selling 17 million albums. Rolling Stone ranked him as number 89 on its 2008 list of 100 greatest singers of all time. Burke ran funeral homes, limousine service, drugstores, a popcorn business, and later had the first Mountain Dew franchise in Philadelphia. He continued to operate companies that supplied theaters and stadiums with his own brand of fast food, Soul Dogs and Soul Corn. Born March 21, 1940 in Philadelphia, Burke was the child of Josephine Moore and an absentee father. His mother Josephine was a nurse, schoolteacher, concert performer, and pastor. When he was nine, his mother married Vincent Burke and had his name changed to Solomon Vincent MacDonald Burke. Burke credited his grandmother as his main spiritual and musical influence. He began preaching at the age of seven and was soon nicknamed the Boy Wonder Preacher for his charismatic preaching in the pulpit. Later, after signing to Atlantic, he clashed over his branding and the songs that he would record. As Burke had struggled from an early age with his attraction to secular music on the one hand and his allegiance to the church on the other, he refused to be classified as a rhythm and blues singer due to a perceived stigma of profanity by the church. They decided to market him as a singer of soul music. He had six younger siblings. From an early age, he worked as a groceries delivery, selling newspapers, car wash, and hot dog seller. He eventually graduated from John Bartram High School. He later trained for a while to be a mortician at Eccles College of Mortuary Science, graduating from Mortuary Science, and worked at a funeral home. Personal life. Burke had his first child at 14 years and was married four times. In total, he fathered 21 children, 14 daughters, and seven sons. He had seven stepchildren, 90 grandchildren, and 19 great-grandchildren at the time of his death. He admitted to serial infidelity during his marriages. In an interview, he said, I realized in later years that money didn't solve problems. Maybe the reason I had problems with my marriages was because I didn't spend enough time with my children. Being on the road 250 days of the year was too much. I was gaining the world and losing my family. One of his regrets was losing his twins James and David at infancy. In an open letter to his children, Burke wrote, Your love and your strength and the love of your mothers have made me the strongest-minded father in the world. I may not be the best father. Maybe I haven't done everything that I should do, could do, or would do, or desire to do, but by the grace of God and your prayers, we will make it. Every day is a new way. None of us are perfect and God knows I have made many mistakes. He was married to Doris Williams for two months. The marriage was annulled by August 1958. It resulted in the birth of one child, Valerie Doris Gresham. His second wife was Dolores Clark Burke, with whom he had seven children, Eleanor Alma, Dr. Melanie Burke, Solomon Vincent Jr., Carolyn Burke, Prince Solomon Burke, Gemini Burke, and Lillian Burke. His third wife was Bernadine Burke. His fourth wife was Frances Burke MacDonald. They had three children. By 1961, Burke had three kids on the outside and about four at home, including Eleanor Burke, Melanie Burke, and Solomon Vincent Burke Jr. For many years, Burke struggled with his health, with his weight estimated somewhere between 300 and 400 pounds. In the later years of his life, arthritis and weight 
limited his mobility and made him reliant on a wheelchair. His hip and knee had to be replaced and he had to lose 150 pounds before they could do that. Despite his efforts, at the time of his death, Burke's weight still exceeded 350 pounds. Death On October 10, 2010, Burke died at Amsterdam Skip Hall Airport while on a plane from Washington Dulles International Airport that had just landed. According to his family, he died of natural causes. Jane Margolis Vickers, his manager, stated that doctors at Reston Hospital suspected that he had a pulmonary embolism and had urged him not to travel. He decided to leave the hospital against medical advice. There was no autopsy after his death, but the general assumption is that Burke died as a result of a pulmonary embolism. His funeral was on October 22nd in Gardena, California, and a memorial service held at the Sharon Baptist Church in Philadelphia. Burke is buried at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in the Hollywood Hills, Los Angeles, California. Career During high school, Burke formed and fronted the quartet, the Gospel Cavaliers. He received his first guitar from his grandmother, later writing his first song, Christmas Presents. Burke won a singing contest and soon several labels including Apollo, VJ Records, and Peacock Records pursued the 15-year-old. Before pursuing the deal, he signed Kay Williams as his manager. Williams then took him to Apollo Records. The move was made after Williams added four years to Burke's age, which led to confusion from the press about his age. He recorded nine singles for the label during his two-year tenure, releasing his first single, Christmas Presents, on Christmas Eve of 1955. He recorded with King Curtis and Lester Young. His other Apollo recordings during this early period included I'm In Love, I'm All Alone, and No Man Walks Alone. These early records did not sell well. Although the self-titled album was re-released in 1964 after Burke had experienced some chart success. Burke gained some notoriety for the Apollo single, You Can Run, But You Can't Hide. After releasing a few singles for other labels, he briefly returned to Apollo releasing one song. And the label issued a self-titled album in 1962. Burke was briefly signed to Triumph Records. However, he could not record for the label because his contract with Apollo had not yet been dissolved. In 1959, businessman Marvin Leonard Chivian offered a management contract to him and signed him to Singular Records. He released just two singles, Doodle Dee Doo and This Little Ring, neither song charted. In 1960, he signed with Atlantic Records. At the time of Burke's signing, two of Atlantic Records' major stars, Bobby Darren and Ray Charles, had left the label for better deals. Burke reportedly helped keep Atlantic Records solvent with his steady run of hit records. Burke recorded 32 singles with Atlantic, most of which hit both the pop and R&B charts. His hits included Just Out of Reach, his first million seller, Cry to Me, If You Need Me, You're Good For Me, Everybody Needs Somebody To Love, Got To Get You Off My Mind, and Tonight's The Night. In 1965, Atlantic released his fifth album, The Best of Solomon Burke. After a string of a dozen hit records, by November 1963, Burke had agreed to be crowned the King of Rock and Soul. In a ceremony at the Royal Theater in Baltimore, he became known for his showmanship as much as he was for his voice. He would often take the stage in a flowing, 15-foot-long cape and bejeweled crown, his stage theatrics predating those of such legendary showmen as James Brown. As he increased in weight, Burke's sheer bulk meant that he could never be a dancer, but his act was full of showmanship. After the success of his, Papa's got a brand new bag in late 1965, considered the biggest year of his career, Burke settled, at best a middle-of-the-pack chart performer. Due to failing chart numbers and the rise of several performers including Aretha Franklin, Wilson Pickett, and Otis Redding, he was described in this period as a king without a kingdom. His position in Atlantic dropped as other artists replaced him as the label's primary artists. Burke tried to regain his early success by recording at Memphis, working on the album I Wish I Knew. He recorded several duets on Jones' album I'll Be Anything For You. Following a failed collaboration with other soul artists, he decided to leave the label. For not being treated properly and that Atlantic just wasn't home anymore. After leaving Atlantic, Burke signed with Bell Records where he released five singles. All but four of the tracks Burke recorded during an 18-month stay with Bell Records were packaged on the Proud Mary LP. After this album and the two following singles, his own, Generation of Revelations, and In the Ghetto failed to chart, his contract was not renewed. November 1970, Burke signed with MGM label and formed MBM Productions, his own production company. Burke's record debut for MGM, Looking Out My Back Door, had disappointing sales. 
his first MGM album, Electronic Magnetism, also failed to chart. In 1972, he had a hit with Love Street and Fool's Road. He recorded the soundtrack to two films, Cool Breeze and Hammer. He left MGM for ABC Dunhill Records in 1974, recording the album I Have a Dream, Midnight and You. By 1975, Burke was signed to Chess Records. He recorded two albums for Chess, Music to Make Love By and Back to My Roots, and had a top 20 R&B hit in 1975 with You and Your Baby Blues. His single, Let Me Wrap My Arms Around You, reached only number 72 on the R&B chart. In 1978, Burke released an album, Please Don't Say Goodbye to Me, through Amherst Records. On September 1978, Burke charted for the 31st and last time when Please Don't Say Goodbye to Me reached number 91 on the R&B chart. He released the album Sidewalks, Fences, and Walls on Infinity Records in 1979. Between 1979 and 1984, he recorded four gospel albums for Savoy Records, starting with the album, Lord I Need a Miracle Right Now. He was nominated for his first Grammy in the Best Male Gospel Soul category for his rendition of Precious Lord, Take My Hand, but complained later that he did not receive royalties from his Savoy work. He then recorded for smaller labels such as Rounder, MCI, Straight, Blacktop, Point Blank, and GTR Records. In 2002, Burke signed with Fat Possum Records and released the album, Don't Give Up On Me. The album became critically acclaimed and later resulted in Burke's first Grammy Award win. Burke later signed with Shout Factory to release the album Make Do With What You Got, which became another critically acclaimed success. In 2006, Burke returned to his country roots with the album Nashville. In 2008, he received another Grammy nomination for the album Like A Fire. In 2010, Burke came out with Nothing's Impossible for E1 Entertainment. Later in 2010, he released his final album, Hold On Tight. From the early 1970s, after having moved to Los Angeles, he concentrated on his pastoral duties to feed the hungry, educate the uneducated, and community work, assisting the Crippled Children's Foundation for Blind and Underprivileged Children while personally being responsible for more than 120 adopted children. Burke was also a mentor to upcoming soul and blues musicians. He was a trendsetter of his time. Don't forget to check out his music, click on the bell notification, and subscribe for more content like this.